Good evening, and welcome to the Putnam Valley Board of Education business meeting, a final budget hearing, final budget hearing business meeting of May the 4th, 2021. Please stand and join me as we salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And for all you Star Wars fans, I'd like to open with May the Fourth be with you. <laughs> and then I'll go into real serious business, which is to a resolution to approve the minutes of the Board of Education meetings of April 8th and April 20th, 2021. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that moves us right into presentations, Dr. Luft. You're part of me. Thank you. So I would like to welcome Ms. Jill Figuerella up to the mic, and she's going to give our final budget hearing presentation, which will look very similar to the last few budget presentations. Yeah. Take your mask. There you go. Your mic's on. Is that okay? Yeah. So we've already heard from all of our department heads and um, our principal building principals, um, as well as our athletic director, um, technology director, and so forth. And this presentation was given in a longer version, um, about three times, and we have a lot of this information on our website. All of it is. So I'm just going to go through um, sort of a, an abbreviated version of this. So tonight, um, I mean, in two weeks, we have our budget vote coming up, and our 21-22 budget goals um, is stated here um, to adequately staff our buildings and support our academic program, of course, um, support curriculum alignment and revision work, uh, provide staff members with um, enriching in-district and out-of-district professional development opportunities, um, as they come up, um, so support social emotional well being of all of our students, um, continue to purchase hardware and um, utilize the uh, replacement cycle that we have with our BOCES for our district technology plan, um, invest in academic software as we need, uh, see, you know, need fit to our program that supports or enhances our instructional program, um, develop, of course, of fiscally responsible budget that meets overall needs of the district and uh, procure and appropriate um, monies for PPE, cleaning supplies, and so forth to keep our students and staff and community safe. So far as the staffing goes in the new budget, we will be, um, there's money in the budget for a library media specialist, um, a special education teacher at the high school, and also, um, that is dependent on the schedule. Um, a point two um, FTE, that's a full-time, that makes a, one of our teachers who's a point eight right now um, a full-time position at our elementary school, and that teacher also has ENL certification, um, and a possible addition of an ENL certified teacher um, is also in the budget as of right now. So. Let me just jump in real quick. So from a hiring standpoint, I just want to be clear, of those four positions, or 3.2 positions, um, the library media specialist, we are moving forward in terms of the hiring process. The special, special education teacher at the high school at this time, we do not anticipate needing to fill. So it's in the budget if we need it, but at this time, we're hopeful that we will not need to fill that position. The point two elementary innovation lab is an existing staff member, so that will go up. And at this time, we don't have any additional E&L needs uh, from how we were able to share staff with multiple certifications. So we are able to provide more E&L support with our existing staff. Um, but we do have money in the budget. If that need arises, E&L is uh, sometimes very difficult to plan for because you don't know students and their needs when they come in or how they'll score on the nicest slot, which determines the level of support they get. So. Just for the community standpoint, library media specialist is part of the hiring process. Um, 
the elementary innovation lab is in, and the other two are on hold for now. Right, and without the enrollment being finalized, we'll know that more, you know, as we get closer to the beginning of the school year. Um, so the position that has been eliminated um, from the uh, budget, who's currently here, is a library clerk at the middle school. Um, we have seven teachers that retired this year, uh, two teaching assistants, one monitor, two bus drivers, and two office assistants. <clears throat> this is our budget for the, sh um, the budget that's on the proposition, $53.1 million, 2.48% uh, change um, over the current year. And um, as far as our revenues, uh, what will be used to um, support that budget will be what we call our local non-tax resources and also a piece of our debt reserve. So we're using a million dollars from our debt reserve and 521,000 in local non-tax resources, which would be like interest earnings and tuitions and um, um, sources such as um, refunds of prior year's expenses that come in uh, as revenue. Uh, we have our state and federal sources, which are our state aid, that's at 11.6 million. And our appropriated fund balance, I wanna talk about that first because we need that to close the gap in the budget and we'll be using $1.3 million of our reserves because right now our tax cap stands at 38.7 million, which is a change of 1.96% over the current year. Um, and that is a calculated formula. So in order to make ends meet, we will be taking money from our reserves. Um, and that's, like I said, $1.3 million. As far as our um, expenditures go, uh, we have our general support portion of the budget. Uh, which it makes up our um, our administrative offices, our um, operations and maintenance, as well as our insurances for the district, and that's $4.9 million. The instructional portion of our budget, which is the largest portion of our, of our, budget, of our budget, excuse me, is $29.6 million. Uh, transportation, that would be our in-district transportation and our contracted transportation, $3.2 million. And our benefits and debt service. So the debt service is what we use to pay our, um, you know, principal and interest on prior years uh, capital projects going back over 30 years. And the benefits would be um, anything that we uh, pay for, such as um, workers' compensation, health insurance for our employees, pension plans, and uh, contributions towards any um, types of insurance for and FICA and Medicare, I'm sorry, taxes on our employees' um, payroll for a total of $53.1 million. Again, uh, the budget to budget change is 2.48%. This is another way of looking at the expenditures that we have in the budget, and these will reflect a percentage. So we have 41.6% four, of our budget going towards classroom instruction directly. 22.8%, <clears throat> again, the employee benefits, that was the, the number I just mentioned um, for the, the taxes, the pension costs, and the health insurance and whatnot. Um, the 8% of our budget would be for our general administrative support, 6.1% um, towards transportation, 4.9% towards support services, that would be our um, therapists and guidance counselors. 5.2% towards operations and maintenance, 6.1% towards debt service, 2.9% towards um, media and technology support, and 2.4% going towards co-curricular and athletic activities. Overall, about 77% of our entire budget directly impacts students and um, that's out of the entire budget. This is a summary of our budget, our, our budget for the last three years. Um, it's very difficult to see here, but if you go on our website and you want, would like to look and compare our revenues and expenditures over the last three years, um, I have a, a 
link to that uh, website here, and of course it's the district's website under budget. <clears throat> and again, I'll show you um, where you would go here. Um, go to your budget information, and this will give you a full out, um, picture of our line-by-line -line budget. Um, this is it. And it's about 18 pages, and it has a summary page, table of contents, where it leads you to uh, whatever topic you might be looking at in the budget. And again, on here, uh, very tiny, but on our website, it's very clear. You can see all of the information there. I'm going to go try to do this the right way this time. Let's say go back. Hmm. I'm just trying to get back to the, there yep. we go. Okay, so in addition to that longer version of the budget with the detail, um, we have these communications coming out. We'll have our newsletter in the U.S. mail um, on Tuesday, uh, May 11th. That's this Tuesday coming up. Um, on channel 18 and 20, you can view the Board of Education meetings. They're replayed there. And you can view the last few meetings to um, go over the budget information if that's where you'd like to look for it. Um, there's also voter information, date and time listed on that, um, on that channel. Uh, that should be scrolling from time to time through there. Um, electronic signs at both the elementary and high school will display um, you know, the vote um, information, uh, when it is, so that everyone is aware. And um, of course, all of our social media, Twitter, um, the app, um, Facebook, and all of our mass email communications will contain that information. Um, I'd also like to remind the student representatives that um, <laughs> to, I don't know if it's possible to get, uh, if you have an email group that goes out to seniors about voting, um, you know, and that that opportunity to vote will be, you know, there for everyone who's eligible. Um, but I think that I wanted to make sure that you knew that. And we're going to scroll something out in the sign in the hallway also so that people are aware. Um, this is a quick uh, look at our eight-year tax rate history. Um, it, right now, um, our current um, estimate for tax rate is about $26.10 per $1,000 of assessment. I understand everyone's been getting their um, newly assessed value of their home in town, and I'm sure that you've seen that they've all gone up. Uh, many, many towns, I mean all towns across New York, everywhere across the country, they're all going up. Uh, values of homes are going up. But they should all be going up at the same percentage rate. So when they do that, the rate still remains, it, it should remain what it is. There shouldn't be a fluctuation in the rate. In fact, the rate will drop, but it'll drop the same amount for everyone. So in other words, you know, the divisor just changed for the assessed value. So when they divide that into the levy, it still should reflect a similar um, change in your taxes as your neighbor. This slide is based on the current proposed levy, which is 38.7 million. Um, it's 1.96% change over last year. Um, it's under the allowable tax cap. Our allowable tax cap was at 2.1%. Um, so keeping that under the cap as much as possible. I believe the difference in the original, the allowable cap and the cap that we're using is about $25,000. So. Um, we were able to do that and stay within the budget um, needs. So this is the 10th consecutive year that Putnam Valley um, School District has had a tax levy under the allowable cap. And I want to remind everyone that um, the tax levy remains the same. What, change, what can change is your assessment, and what can change is the state equalization rate. So those are the things that will drive what the final tax rate comes out to be. And I, I just want to keep that, people to keep that in mind, that it's their individual assessment that can make those changes. Um, this is our um, formula for the tax cap and how we arrive at it. I've gone over the calculation a number of times. Um, 
I, I think um, this is a really simplified or dumbed down version of that calculation, um, just so that I can try to portray you know, a picture of how we arrive at that number. And we start off with last year's tax levy. Um, there's an allowable tax rate growth factor that the state gives us that adds $30,000 to the, to the tax levy. Um, then we grow it by the CPI. That's part of the formula. This year was 1.23%, which is about $450,000. And then the, we, take, we're, we take the net of our capital tax levy. So that's the net of what we have to pay in debt service for our principal and interest ver, against the aid that we get on, <clears throat> on those payments. And that gives us an allowable cap of 2.1% or 38.7 million. And again, we are going to 38.7, but not to the complete cap because we were um, able to keep that down under 2%. And this is um, strictly about if the budget um, would not pass on the first try, what that would mean for the school district. Um, the board um, could put up a revised budget um, before the voters again during a second vote in the, uh, I believe it's the second week in June. Um, and then a second budget defeat would require the adoption of a contingency budget. The contingency budget would force the tax levy to revert back to what it was in the prior year. And so that would mean for Putnam Valley about $745,000 cut from the adopted budget. It's a huge number. It would mean cutting programs. It would mean cutting staff. Uh, obviously not good for the school district. Um, but even worse, what it causes is that the next year's budget a future budget, would only be able to start at the same tax levy that we had two years ago. It would be almost impossible to operate on a, a cut budget, a $1.4 million cut budget um, in a future year. And, and that just continues to um, compound as time goes by. So I think voters need to understand what that means. It doesn't just mean reverting back to prior year's tax levy and then starting over next year. It means starting over next year with a tax levy that's two years old. And uh, it's a big number to be cutting from, from a school budget. <clears throat> so here is our voter information. Uh, again, school budget vote is on May 18th. Um, and it's at the elementary school between si nine, uh, 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. Um, we have two trustee seats on the ballot. Um, May absentee ballot. May 11th is the last day that you can request an absentee ballot by mail. There would be no time to get it to you if you needed one, and but you could pick one up. Oops, I'm sorry. Or and fill it out, um, or pick one up and get it back to us by May 18th at 5 p.m. for it to be valid. Also, I believe voter registration for anybody who's not registered and lives here, May 13th is the deadline. So that's an important number uh, date for you too, Jessica. Um, so for more information about any of this, the vote or the budget itself, you can contact myself or the district clerk, Maureen Bellino, at that email address or by phone. And all of this information, again, is on our website. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, just, are there any additional questions you've been receiving from the community that haven't been addressed that? Um, um, no, mentioned? I have not received any questions personally. Um, we've offered, you know, at every meeting to, I don't know how many people are watching from week to week. Um, obviously, the budget is a very important part of the school. Um, and. You know, I haven't received any questions myself. I don't know if Dr. Luft has. Yeah, I mean, I've also been extending that same offer uh, to review the budget in more detail with any uh, school-based organizations or other individuals, but have not had anyone uh, take advantage of that opportunity. So I have not received any budget-related questions as of late. And just a couple communication questions. I know you mentioned it is playing on the cable vision on, at the town site. Do we have a slide that goes up on the town site where they do their feed? That we do. Be, We've we do submitted that. that to them. Um, okay. They're going to be running that. Um, it will just give, um, you know, the date, time, and um, 
location of the vote to ensure that we get a good turnout. Great. Okay, two more. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the mass email communications that we send out. How does someone get on that list? So they can, they can get on the list. Um, it'll be on our newsletter when it goes out. Now, the newsletter does go out to all of our um, residents. It doesn't just go to the school community. I right, just want to make right. sure everybody understands that. Um, and that contains our budget notice. Um, they can email, um, I believe there's, a, is there a separate email, Maureen, for that? Um, okay. Oh, okay. okay, to sign up cool. for the electronic newsletter. Yeah, um, they can go to the website. Yep. And one more comment, sorry. No, um, that's fine. Because I, I was looking at it on my phone today, and just to, if someone goes to the PVCSD website on their phone, they have to scroll all the way to the bottom to get to the budget information. So okay. just an FYI, it's not at the top. People just need to be patient, scroll to the bottom okay. on their phones. I but think, it's best I think we'll be computer. posting it up, um, the links up, like, these last two weeks mm -hmm. so that they can access it more yeah. easily. So. Definitely recommend viewing from a computer. That's it. Yeah, to, to that point, on the computer, it's on the upper right-hand side, right. but on your phone, it takes everything and puts it into one column, mm -hmm. so that right-hand column gets put below the other one. Right. And I was quickly looking. I do know there's a link on the website, uh, just an email address. Essentially, if you fill in a form, you'll be added to the email distribution list. And that's available to anyone. You don't have to be um, a parent or any way associated with the school. We're happy to send those communications out to anyone. And it's right on the right-hand side, about halfway down, there's a link that says sign up for our newsletter. Great. I'm currently not on social media, so I'm, I'm realizing from the town and school the communications. Right. So. I think it, it'll be a good yeah. idea for us to try and place it on the app as many times as we can between now and May 18th so that no one forgets about about it. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Now, are we providing Ralph Smith, who's our liaison to the town board, with uh, details or you know, as far as presenting, or are we going to have the ability to do a brief update? Uh, but they have a meeting next Wednesday, I think. I, I speak directly with Ralph before every uh, town board meeting. He calls me and I give an update on behalf of the school. Um, next time I'm happy to reach out to him or attend in person uh, if need be, but I do provide him with details before every board meeting uh, so to make sure he has accurate information to share during his education report. Is the sign going to go up in town, the across the road? Are they not doing that this year? Or? So we're working on it. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. No, I, we've inquired to see if that was a possibility, and we're waiting for an answer. We just inquired yesterday. Um, I know they, know they won't put it up too early because no, you, know, you want it to, to stay wait, there yeah. and, and be in a place that no one's ignoring it. We want it mm -hmm. to be seen like right before so that we engage, you know, engage people. In the so we're, gonna, we're looking into it over the next couple of days to see if it's going to go up. Yeah. Okay. Ancillary, like it's not ancillary. Um, with the staffing situation, uh, aren't we confident in where we stand on all the master schedules for all the buildings that we can fulfill without having to add additional staff in an emergency way? Yeah, I mean, barring an emergency, we believe that we have the staff that we need, and obviously those. Um, the final scheduling piece is underway, but the first thing the buildings do is look at the staffing. So look at courses, look at number of students, and project the number of staff members who we need to cover those sections. So that work has already been completed, and at this time we don't anticipate there being any additional needs other than the possibility of the two positions that are in the budget, the high school special ed and the E&L support because that changes during annual reviews sure. and uh, based upon performance on the NISA slot and students moving into the district. So those are the two variables every year are always sort of uh, possible that we could see an increased need. Just the one, uh, one little addition, the vote has uh, Jill mentioned it is on the 18th, two weeks from today. Polls open at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they close at 9. Thank you.
speaking of which, polls and voting. Our next uh, presentation item is to discuss uh, and select a May 18th school vote chairperson. I don't know if they could hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. uh, our next um, uh, presentation is to, uh, to select a May 18th school vote chairperson from among the board. So is there anyone available to volunteer? Anyone up for re-election is not eligible? I can get there at 5.30 in the morning. In the morning? Okay. I could be there in the evening. Okay. What do you, you need both that covered, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That would be you great. Have to close it. I'm, I'm actually um, attending another board meeting that night in another school. I'm cheating on Putnam Valley, and I'm doing a presentation <laughs> at the NIAC board meeting, and I'm not sure what time it's going to be over, so I don't want to commit, so that would be great. So, and will that be in a resolution? or? Okay, perfect. Okay. And now moving on to my personal favorite part of every board meeting. There's your build up, Jessica. Um, the student representatives report. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Jeremy, you want to tell her she can take her mask off if she's. If you're talking, right. Yeah, we're, yeah I'm vaccinated. Yay. So yeah. <laughs> we can hear you. Um, so just um, talking about the financial. For people watching at home, if you are 18, um, when you got your, if and when you got your driver's license, you could have been able to pre-register, which makes you eligible to vote now that you've turned 18. So keep that in mind, even if you don't think that you're registered to vote, you might be. Um, and if you're 18, go register to vote, it's important. Um, <laughs> um, so things that are going on in school, just a quick little recap. This past weekend was Drowsy Chaperone showing. Um, Spring sports are on. What else? Um, SATs are this weekend, this Saturday. Juniors, a whole bunch of juniors will be taking it, I believe. Um, what else? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what else is happening. Um, not much else has been going on in the school. It's kind of getting normal. Like, it feels like normal <laughs> school. Because it, it, the last time I was here, I was just kind of like, it's a little weird being back. But now it's back to being normal. Um, you know, Miss Thornton was giving out some baked goods, so. Yeah. <laughs> it was a back to be counted on. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, so that was, um, I have a couple questions. I don't know if you're going to be able to answer them, but questions. Um, so first, I've been, people have been coming to me asking me about Powder Puff, if that's doable. I don't, I talked to Miss Centuri about it. She said that she doesn't think it is, and I, don't mean to go over her head, but I just don't know if there's new information. <laughs> but I'm the school board but representative well. from the student body, and I can do that. <laughs> I'm going to, of course, agree with my administrative colleague. I, I think it would be, in terms of the guidelines now, I mean, that would be considered just some sort of a gathering, and it certainly would not um, meet the guidelines that are in place for what would be like a social gathering. So okay. I'm going to say, unfortunately, that okay. would be very difficult to pull off. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> um, thank you, anyway. Um, prom tickets have gone on sale. Graduation gowns and caps have gone on sale, so go buy those if you're watching home. Those two things will happen. Yeah. Prom and graduation. Yeah. Prom. That, those will happen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, great. Um, May 1st, this was, that was decision day for a lot of people, so pretty much all the seniors know what they're doing. Um, and what Oh, driver's ed. I've been getting questions about driver's ed. Um, it has not happened this, in, like in conjunction with the school, correct? It's since COVID. So yeah, the driver's ed, the program, the company we used to contract with is no longer in operation. And the guidelines that came out for how sort of virtual driver's ed looks came out after the sort of the deadline we would need to hire a new company. So it's something that I know the high school is looking at for the future. I do know that some neighboring school districts that are offering it have uh, offered seats to be available to Putnam Valley students. So if um, you know anyone who's interested, I would just encourage them to reach out to the high school administrators and they can maybe help point them in the right direction. But I, I did see like specifically Lakeland had offered to allow Putnam Valley students to join their school if they're interested. Okay, thank you. So no 
summer program? No. There, there will not be a summer program okay. in Putnam Valley this year, no. All right, thank you. Um, Progress, you couldn't be here tonight, so sorry. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, everyone's, I think all the seniors are just getting senioritis now that we're back. <laughs> um, <laughs> juniors are getting real nervous for their finals and their APs and their SATs. And I think freshmen and sophomores are just kind of like finally getting used to what high school looks like. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank and you. Jess, can I congratulate you on your incredible IBCAS portfolio <laughs> presentation? Thank you. Incredible. Thank you. Well, I think the exciting part of the meeting is hearing that students are enjoying uh, some sense of normalcy and return to school. Uh, certainly a, a renewed energy in all of our buildings, having the students back. And the weather is nice and it feels like school for the first time in a very long time. So I was happy to hear that students are feeling the same way. Just jumping into my presentation. Yep, right ahead. So I need no invitation uh, introduction, Dr. <laughs> Thank you. Love. I'll introduce myself. So uh, Ms. Parmelini and I actually had a conversation this afternoon about the CAS presentations and how impressed we've been with what the students were able to put together uh, despite all the challenges, challenges they faced uh, in the midst of COVID, uh, just hearing their presentations and the impact they were able to make on the community and each other is certainly very impressive. So I know we had mentioned Jess had done a fantastic job and created a video, um, taught me some soccer skills and some drills of practice, um, but it was, it's been really impressive and I know many of the board members have had an opportunity to join to follow along on those presentations. There's been a lot of conversation about uh, the new director of curriculum instruction position, so I just wanted to provide a highlight. As everyone is aware, Ms. Mastretta uh, will be leaving the district effective July 1st, although she promises to stay and help the new person in any way they can. Uh, we received over 70 applicants for the position. A small committee was put together to conduct screening interviews. We've screened 15 separate candidates. Uh, of those candidates, the finalists will be moving forward to a committee and presentation uh, interviews, and those will consist of a larger group, parents, teachers, administrators, community members, board members, and two students. No pressure, Jess, but you have to be on it, and you have to find me one more, see if Parker's interested. Uh, and those will be, those will happen on May 18th is the date. I'll make sure you get the rest of the information. Parents will have parents both on the committee in person, as well as some parents and other members of the community joining virtually, just so we can minimize the number of individuals that are in the classroom, but maximize the number of individuals involved in the process. So we'll be communicating out to the parents. We had a tremendous uh, number of parents express interest in participating, so we'll be reaching out to those individuals this week um, to ask them if they want to be in person or remote and make sure they have the information they need to participate. I will be uh, asking the board to consider a calendar change for the end of the school year. As many are aware, we did not use two of our snow days, our allotted snow days for this school year. So I'm gonna recommend uh, the board consider making June 24th a half day for elementary and middle school students. And that would provide the teachers the afternoon to begin some of the many responsibilities they have at the end of the school year. And I'll be recommending that the board consider turning June, Friday, June 25th into a superintendent's conference day. Hence would be no school for students and in the elementary school and the middle school. The high school will already be within their regents week, so that would continue as typical uh, that week, that last week in June. Just a quick update on Regents exams. As many are aware, New York State has been required to offer the ELA Algebra Living Environment and Earth Science exams. All other Regents exams have been canceled. The exams are not required for graduation and there is no impact on the student's score or their ability to graduate, whether they decide to sit or not to sit for the exams. So there's been some misinformation out there. What if I sit for the exam and don't do well? How will it impact anything? Um, there will be no graduation impact 
whether a student sits for the exam or not. And again, only those four core exams will be offered. Wouldn't be an update if I didn't talk a little bit about COVID. So I just wanted to share, actually, in some cases, some positive news. Um, I'm actually very surprised and happy to report the positivity rate in Putnam County, the seven-day positivity rate is now below 2%, 1.8% effective today. That's great news. We have moved out of the CDC's high transmission, um, which again is good news for school districts. I pulled up today the vaccination rate for Putnam County is up to 51.6%. Uh, that's the percentage of Putnam County residents that have received at least their first dose. We've been having internal conversations about when to restart our testing program, and that's something that more information will be coming out for in the, in the near future. Vaccination appointments are now widely available across the region. Uh, I did get word today that Pfizer is coming to Putnam County. So Pfizer is currently available for anyone age 16 and older, but we do anticipate in the next few days that authorization extending down to uh, children as young as age 12. So I'm hopeful the timing will work out if Putnam County, Putnam County gets doses of Pfizer and uh, and it's approved for use down to 12 students of age 12 that we may see uh, greater availability to some of our students to receive the vaccine. And we're continuing to work with Putnam County in hopes of offering a school-based vaccination clinic. And I know the Putnam County DOH is preparing a survey to see the level of interest among parents to have children from 12 to 17 uh, receive the Pfizer vaccine so they know how many and how many to order. As was mentioned, the spring, sort se spring sports season is underway. All teams are up and running. I do want to do, extend a couple of congratulations. NISMA, uh, congratulating 60 middle school students who participated in the NISMA solo and ensemble virtual performance. We also had the Tri-County Science Competition. Emma, Emma Silverman, finished second in animal science and was named an alternate for the Science Congress competition in June. And our own Aaliyah Steele was first in neuroscience and top overall project in the entire fair. And she will be moving on as a member of the Science Congress competition in June. We also had our Junior National Honor Society and our National Honor Society ceremonies. So I wanna congratulate all of those students for that great accomplishment. And as was also mentioned, our virtual performance of the Drowsy Chaperone also happened this past weekend. During a recent board meeting, um, I was asked to provide some additional information on the Mandarin program. So I just wanted to highlight the, really the two different aspects of the Mandarin program here in Putnam Valley. Our elementary school began a pilot in collaboration with Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES that initially began serving K students, that was three years ago. That program has since expanded to include students in grades K through two. Uh, we have a teaching assistant from BOCES that comes to each of our classes. They push in and work directly with the teacher uh, for 30 minutes once a week. And that work is, uh, they always try to align it with what the students are learning in the classroom. So in kindergarten, if the students are learning letters, the, in Mandarin, they'll also learn letters. If they're learning letter sounds, then they learn Mandarin letter sounds. So if we're learning about uh, culture uh, in social studies, then we may spend some time talking about culture through the Mandarin study. It's, the feedback has been extremely positive. Um, it's been a great partnership with P&W BOCES. Last year, the Education Foundation chipped in to help us keep the program up and running, and I'm excited to see uh, where it goes. Uh, representatives from PNW BOCES did come to our elementary school uh, to their faculty meeting this week and did a presentation for the entire faculty, making sure that all teachers were aware of the program and its impact on students. Some of the highlights of that presentation uh, talked about the benefits of learning a second language at an early age, uh, the fact that it nurtures curiosity, cultural sensitivity, empathy, and tolerance, and it gives students a head start on language development. The other aspect of the Mandarin program is in our middle school and the high school. This is a hybrid program offered through Orange Ulster BOCES. The certified teacher is virtual, but we do have a teaching assistant in the classrooms. At the middle school, the middle school students make a two-year commitment in seventh grade, and at the end of that two-year commitment, they get credit 
for their um, first level of a language, so their checkpoint A. And so they get half a credit in seventh grade, half a credit in eighth grade. We do have 24 seventh graders signed up for uh, Mandarin for next school year, so that's a, a great number, and I hope those uh, students stick with it into the high school. Uh, we do have students in the Mandarin cohort in the high school. There, it does create some conflicts with the IB program. Uh, some of the solutions we're exploring is the possibility of hiring our own Mandarin teacher. Um, we certainly will reach a tipping point if enough student interest is there. It would be financially or fiscally responsible to bring on our own teacher as opposed to contracting through BOCES. And we're just monitoring the student enrollment to decide if we're going to reach that tipping point. For now, students who wish to pursue an IB diploma uh, must move out of Mandarin and switch to French ab initio in the high school in order to pursue the IB diploma because IB will not recognize that hybrid model in which we currently, our students currently receive Mandarin. Although I think it'll be interesting to see after the school year if that feeling changes since hybrid instruction became a norm over the past year. As mentioned in other meetings, each of our buildings is planning their summer recovery slash reentry plans. Just a quick highlight of what some of those will expect it to look like. Our elementary school will hold their typical kinder camp August 23rd to 26th, uh, kindergarten back to school night on the 26th, and kindergarten bus run on the 27th. They'll also be offering an academic boost and transition support. Uh, grades 3 and 4, August 9th through 12th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Grades 1 and 2, August 16 to 19, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And obviously, much more information will be coming directly from the buildings uh, regarding those programs, gauging support of parents, um, interest levels, so we can appropriately staff based upon the number of students who wish to take advantage of those offerings. Our middle school is calling it a summer enrichment program. And it will be two phases, uh, both in SEL and an academic support phase. Uh, there will be a 7th and 8th grade cohort, as well as a 5th and 6th grade cohort. They'll each meet for a week from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And middle school is also planning a 5th grade summer camp, similar to the kinder camp or the freshman foundations, uh, a way to welcome incoming 5th graders to the middle school and help acclimate them to the building, the structure, and make sure they're comfortable. Our high school is calling their program Summer Connections. They have an extension of their freshman foundations, um, and it's also geared for all remote learners. They've scheduled it into picnics, so they're offering six different picnics featuring fun activities across different content areas. So an example is like the science of ice cream. So the students will come together, they'll work with a science teacher, they'll do a lesson about the science of ice cream, and then they'll have an opportunity to make their own ice cream. Uh, there's critical thinking games, there's escape rooms, there's other fun activities uh, that are both um, academically rich, but also fun for students. And really, we want to create this welcoming environment to get students back into the building. Some of these students will not have stepped foot in the high school or in any building in almost 18 months. So we want to make sure they're comfortable returning before the start of the school year. The high school will also be continuing their college essay writing. Um, their IB boot camp and their math, math foundations work over the summer. I do want to uh, quickly welcome Jeanette to the mic. I know there was a conversation about curriculum writing and uh, Ms. Mastretta is going to offer a quick update as to the work that is planned for this summer around writing curriculum and just my PSA, as everyone had mentioned, May 18th, school budget vote and board trustee elections Please get out there and vote. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to start by thanking Jess for sharing that school is back to normal. <laughs> Even though it's May, it's so nice to hear that. So um, one of our, can I take this off? One of our curriculum um, priorities for this summer is in the area of writing, um, writing across all content areas. So we're planning for in-person professional development um, and we're really looking forward to that to being together and having team time um, and grade level time together so we're planning vertical and horizontal alignment within writing um, we're going to be incorporating the writing revolution in grades K through 8 and I'll tell you just a little bit about writing revolution we did use 
writing revolution a few years ago we sent teachers for training and they came back and just really raved about it had a lot of um, positive experiences uh, piloting it in their classrooms and so last year they used it with some of our elementary school teachers turnkeyed that and it sort of got off the ground just as it sort of ended um, so we're really looking forward to bringing that back but um, we've partnered with Generation Ready uh, a consultant through BOCES to provide professional development to our teachers this summer incorporating the writing revolution method of instruction um, it, it's not so it's not a writing program but more of a um, uh, instructional uh, strategies and methods in writing yeah, it can be used no matter what subject area or no matter what grade level that you teach. Um, teachers of all subjects adapt the writing revolution strategies and activities, and they really truly can be woven into all content areas. Um, it's explicit writing and um, instructional strategies that help our students identify comprehension gaps, boost reading comprehension, enhance speaking abilities, and improve organization organizational and study skills. Uh, the writing revolution method teaches students how to break down the writing process um, into chunks and then to be able to be applied into all content. And this work really helps, the K-8 work really will help support our high school, um, our students as they progress and eventually um, enter high school. Um, as our high school professional learning focus for the upcoming school year, one of their focuses will be um, centers around IB approaches to teaching uh, in all grades 9 through 12 with a lens on inquiry, critical thinking, and writing. So in the elementary school, like I had said, some of our teachers had been previously trained. Uh, this summer there will be a representative from each grade level that will be trained and then they will do turnkey training with their um, grade level colleagues and there's a lot of excitement um, in the building about doing that work. The middle school is looking to work on horizontal and vertical alignment. Um, They're looking for a uh, more clear balance between their narrative, creative writing, and response writing. And um, like I said earlier, the high school, uh, one of their curricular priority Topics is IB approaches for teaching. Um, Dr. Trieri and Mr. Mello will be working with all staff um, to continue the development of inquiry, critical thinking, and writing in all grades 9 through 12. And then additionally, we're hoping to offer a summer teaching assistant academy this summer, and one of the sessions that we have um, or we're hoping to bring in is supporting academic writing and supporting uh, the writing revolution techniques for teachers. Any questions? Thank you. So our plan is certainly, this is, uh, I know, a priority of ours and has been for several years. I know it was a concern raised by parents and obviously once this, all this work is completed, we'd be happy to invite back some teachers uh, to share how the work has impacted them in their classroom uh, regarding writing. So that's certainly our hope for a presentation next school year once much of this work is completed. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Right, at this point, um, the public is welcome to speak on any of the listed agenda items. Uh, Ms. Sibelina, do we have any questions? Send them a thank you on behalf of all of us. <laughs> thank you. All right, if there is nothing else from the uh, public, let us move right into new business. And I'll ask you to begin, Mr. Ferrara. Resolve the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools to accept the resignation of the elementary school lunch monitor, Justin Rivas, from the district effective June 12, 2021, as per document number 17721, attached to the agenda and official minutes of this meeting. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two. Resolve the recommendation of Superintendent of Schools to approve entering into an agreement with Westchester Institute for Human Development for Technical Service effective July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 
2022, as per document 178-21, attached to the agenda and official minutes of this meeting. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three. Whereas Napoleon Shalom, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> okay. PLLC attorneys at law are uniquely familiar with the effects of perfluorinated compounds, PFCs, or any unregulated contaminants in the water supply wells and the ability to recover for damages in the event of its presence within the Putnam Valley Central School District's, District's water supply wells, and whereas Napoleon Shalom, PLLC made a written proposal to the district in January 2021. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints the law firm of Napoli Chilnaki PLLC as special counsel to represent the district in litigation regarding contaminants and water supply wells within the district pursuant to the terms of the fee proposal offered to the district dated January 2021 and authorizes the board president to execute the retainer agreement with Napoli Shalakic PLLC, a copy of such fee proposal and retainer agreement are incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting as per document number 179-21. Second. Questions or comments? Very well read, Ms. Yetter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number four. Resolved on the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following 2018 capital project change order number MS4-09, credit from RLJ Electric Corp in the amount of $16,825.17 for labor, equipment, and materials related to remedial work. Thank you. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to the consent agenda number one. Resolve and recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve items two through nine as appears within the cons consent agenda section of this meeting. Second. Uh, questions or comments? We're Sorry. appointing workers for the election. There's about nine workers we're appointing. We're appointing Ms. Yetter next to me and myself as chairpersons, and that's a non-paid position. We're approving disposal of some uh, uh, physics books which are, are no longer of value to the district. We're accepting a generous donation from Lord San, I apologize, Lord Santiago to be used for uh, awards to the high school one act play group. We're approving an unpaid day for a staff member. We're appointing the CSEA and CPSE chairpersons for the coming year. And that's uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, that's six people. We're approving updates to the substitute, two, substitute list and we're approving additional hours for school lunch monitors to participate in safety training program um, run by the Altara Safety Consulting Group. And it'll be approximately 30 minutes at most for these people. And we're approving an overnight trip for Aaliyah Steele, the student that Mr. Luff mentioned, the science research student and she'll be competing in a statewide competition. We're also approving um, one teacher to join her and the uh, Jerry Zupan, the uh, science research um, mentor. He's gonna be joining them at Lisa too. And congratulations to her. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. At this point we're gonna talk about future presentations or board meetings so coming up on May 20th we have two presentations scheduled we have the high school IB program uh, Dr. Jerry will be here and we have the highlights of special areas Ms. Mastretta uh, will be here for that on June 3rd we have KG and D the five-year plan and the anti-racism committee update and then I just wanted to clarify there were some conversations regarding uh, presentation on the BOCES budget, if we wanted to squeeze that into one of those two dates. Or it, I we don't can... think it was about the budget. It was just the programs they offered. Okay. So. Um, and the programs that we, our students attend or right. participate in. Right. Okay. So that's something that we can, if we can't squeeze it in this year, we can yeah, certainly start anytime soon. next school year. But it's a great, it's a great opportunity yeah. to share. <laughs> I don't think 
It's been a while. We since have done it right. periodically, but not for quite some time. I think so. many think of BOCES from the sort of the traditional technical right. school component of it, mm -hmm. and they certainly offer a wide range of services well beyond that. And I, I think the last time BOCES was here was for their capital program. Yeah. And they yep. presented yeah, that yeah, there's a hard push. And I know there was one time they were here with the student and they stood up right. and said, we are not your father's BOCES. Like, it's mm. just a dear, your mm. mother's BOCES. Mm. It is a very, very here. different program. <laughs> a perfect example is if you go to their graduation, it's just really amazing the different schools it's, and all the kids, the courses that they're taking and what they're doing. It's really incredible. Right. So... Yeah, so that would be that I'll would make be sure fun. we schedule that for fun and enjoyable. Just, just to emphasize what was mentioned before, one other thing for May 20th, we will be going over the vote from May 18th. Okay. Certification of the vote. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do we have any other public comments at this time? No. So, at this time, I would like a motion. Wait, you know, yeah. just one one thing. Oh, from I got the board, a, sorry. That's okay. Um, I got a request from um, the Westchester Putnam School Boards Association. Our Area 10 director is Peggy Zuckaby. Um, she's been our um, our representative on the board of directors for uh, like uh, 11 or 12 years. Um, the last six years, she's been on the executive committee and. I think this year she will be elected to be president of the board of the, uh, the NISBA board. Um, mm -hmm. But she has to be nominated by districts in her area. So I'm going to ask Maureen to put a, a resolution for the next meeting, just that we nominate her on Putnam Valley letterhead. Um, and. We'll just send that in. It has to be done by August, so we have plenty of time. But if I put it off, I'll forget. Right. So um, uh, you'll see. It. I'm going to ask Maureen to put it on at the next meeting. Okay? Okay. okay. Anything from anyone else? Just vote. Absolutely. Please go out. <laughs> it's good role modeling for your children. Two weeks from today. Two, two weeks from two today. Two weeks from today, May 18th. So at this point, I'd like to resolve to adjourn the uh, final budget hearing by the business meeting of May 4th. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Night. Happy spring, everybody. Enjoy the last eight weeks or so of the school year, and we'll see you in two weeks.